If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Africa Business Landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. They are 1.8 billion globally. They will make 75 percent workforce by 2025. They will outpace earnings of baby boomers in less than 10 years. Smartphones and tablets are the argument settlers and fact checkers of every conversation. Get more insights on Africa millennials on Africa Business Radio towards a profitable Africa. S cool on the beat. All right, how we doing? How we doing, people? It's a very, very wonderful Wednesday afternoon in the city of Lagos.、Uh, I don't even know if it's Hamatan or humidity. I don't even, I don't even understand it. It's cold right now, and it's hot the next minute. All right, it's Tommy Wale again on the African Millennial Radio Show on Africa Business Radio dot com.、Um, how we doing though? How's how's the year going? How's the month of January? Do you think it has a hundred days or still sticking to thirty one days so far? Right, a lot of people are. I'm sure people are expecting their salaries next week, and you know, people are also expecting that that invoice comes through <laughs> from those clients right next week. Also, so salaries can can roll in. All right,、um, my guest today is just this very interesting guy that I think I've known for about four years now, or three years, four years actually, for 2016. Yeah, 2016. And、um, okay, quick background. Right, I'm not going to do any bio for him right now. I'm just going to tell you how he came through. So. This dude called Cash. Call him Cash, okay? Cash, right? He said, "Okay, there's this guy, Duran, and everything. Looks like you might want to meet him." And then Duran came into the into the room, and then from like the first few sentences, like, "Okay, there's a click here," right? And he got talking and everything, and then Duran joined, you know, the team at Get Up Inc at the time, and pulled up together a lot of projects. And at the end, as it was all going, I realized, that, okay, this guy actually attended my secondary school. Well, like the boys cut out my secondary school. <laughs> That's funny. Wait,、well, first of all, Dira, how are you doing, though? Very good, man. I'm very splendid. Thanks、I、for mean, asking. Thanks, thanks for coming, you know, to the show. It's、I、my mean, pleasure. You, you are you are around in December. There are a lot of jokes that are going to crack on the show. I <laughs> bet. I'm, I'm definitely going to crack that joke of the red light. <laughs> <I'm down for laughs> all right. So,、um, what was I? No, I can't be lost in my thoughts. So. We did a couple of projects together, and you know, Duran was always there, ensuring that the team, you know, was together. Times where, you know, I just go like, you know what, this thing, I'm not going, I'm not going to be involved in this project. Duran just finds a way to gather everybody. I think there was a time that we had to go for one、um, business day event. I was supposed to teach yeah, at the Civic that,、um, Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then okay, I was going to say okay, let's try to get maybe an Uber or something. And then Duran just said no. There's a car ready. And I was like, ah, this guy, this guy, he's a very, very resourceful guy, and you know.、Um, We're going to be having this interesting topic. It's how African millennials adapt to global environments, and this is it.、Um, Duran one day decided that he was going to the US. Right? He's like, okay, this Nigeria, we're good. We've seen each other on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll. So he went to the US, and then he went to this part of the US that he likens to a Nikiri in Nigeria. So it was a place called、um, Gastonia, North Carolina. Gastonia. Gastonia, Gastonia. Yes. All right. North Carolina. And then he was like, "Okay, you know what? <laughs> This is not why I came here." And then one day, the same way he stood up, I went to the US. The same way he packed his bags and went to live in New York. New York City, the Big Apple. Big Apple. With how much in your bag? 
I know a thousand uh, dollars or something. I'd, I'd, um, few more than a thousand bucks with me, but I'd like money. But definitely I not enough. Not enough. I wish I had like 20 times more than what I had. But then it just went. I just went with faith and believing that <laughs> God was behind me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, so this is, this is a guy that there's no fear right and it's 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 a very very interesting characteristic of african millennials right especially the ones who want something better for themselves they know that there are obstacles they know there are things happening but then you know what let me just take the leap anyways and see what happens and draw really really personifies all of that so draw let's chop things up chop 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 all right um you study psychology in school yes right in university of Ibadan. Yes. Right, and you're currently doing your master's in um, integrated marketing in NYU. In New York yeah. University. All right. Why are you doing everything you're doing? Man. <laughs> I wish I had the answer to that, like, mm-hmm. straight answer, but I'm just trying to leave. Right. That's the simple, short answer. Like, mm-hmm. What would I rather do? Um, not try things. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to um, go with the flow and mm-hmm. follow my gut feeling, you know? Okay. So, um, do you do you sometimes have some fear? Yeah. Of the unknown. Of course, everybody's scared. When you have some fear, like have some fear that will actually stop in your tracks or you just think it's just an innate thing to just keep going forward and doing these things you're doing. Yeah, so um, when it comes to the talk about fear, right, mm. um, it cripples you if you, if you um, give it so much thought. Mm-hmm. You understand? So, I try as much as possible to um, disregard or neglect it. It comes okay. sometimes, and I'm like, uh, when it comes, what do I do? I kind of um, leave my body. I know that. I, what am I scared of? What, what am I afraid of? Mm. And um, when it comes to that, I try to um, see what causes the fear initially. Like, what is the root of this fear? Okay. So I can just pull it from like, pew, okay, up and gone. Okay, you understand? So, <laughs> okay, that is how I kind of attack fear. Sometimes mm. I know that if I'm scared of something, like for instance, I did um, something I would I wouldn't really do. Mm. Okay, yeah, before I left Nigeria, I couldn't swim. Right. So this is a quick story. Right. I'll tell a lot of stories today. So just right. so you know. <laughs> so um, I wanted to do something new. Like I was so scared, so scared of swimming. I couldn't really swim for the longest. Mm-hmm. So I got to the US and I like, I saw a um, swim coach, and he said he would charge me like fifty bucks, per, maybe fifty per hour, then two hours class. That's like for eight classes, mm-hmm. and um, the eight classes wouldn't run up to like maybe two thousand dollars. I'm like, why would I pay that money to learn to swim? He said the first thing is for you to overcome your fear of swimming. Okay. I'm like ah, he said that to be like two classes, depending on how good I am. Like two classes, I'm like, okay, fine, no problem, I got you. So the next thing I just did was bought a swimming trunk. Mm-hmm. When the guy was in there, I think that was my guy or so. I just went to the water, never before. Just phew. I just saw myself floating, like whatever. I go to fight this water together. So oh, there was a lifeguard though. There was a lifeguard in okay. the pool. So I just went into the pool, like fear, mm-hmm. die, 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 die. Mm-hmm. I just did that, and I saved myself like four hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the girls are happy, but I learned to swim that way. So that's okay. like that's like a more um, physical and more personal way of attacking fear. But there's more things to fear that I'm sure we all know, like mm-hmm. fear of the unknown. Uh, mm-hmm. What if you fail and what if you do that? Do this mm-hmm. and do that. Mm-hmm. But that was how I kind of attack it. Just go for it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Okay. Now I like that. Now, um, so this thing is about attacking fear. We had a guest, Bolo Nasoya, okay. earlier, and he was talking about things that have ruled our subconscious. Right, so it says that maybe it's how we're brought up, a lot of fear in between and everything. It says that our subconscious actually takes over like 70% of the things we think of. Yeah, I right. believe so. So it says, um, you, for example, you're driving from wherever you're coming from to wherever you're going, right? Your subconscious is you driving because you've learned how to do it, you know how to do it already, right? But there may be things like... Um, honing or checking some things or seeing something that one is now a conscious um, what's it called a conscious action yeah. so in taking anything you're supposed to do in, in taking any action on things you're supposed to do there's first of all that foundation which is a subconscious true what things do you think influenced your part of not being afraid because I believe that that's a lot in your subconscious already right you know what this thing I'm just going to yank it off I said earlier Right. So, what are the things that maybe if you can trace some things back that trigger this this part? Okay. So, um, I mean, if I go back to, I don't know how far back I can go, but as as far back as I can remember, yeah, you get. Um, I'm the last child of three kids. Right. And um, I have an half brother. Mm-hmm. So, 
two brothers and one sister. I've just been like that. And my parents were not really around for my growing up. I was just around, up and around. So I just used to do things. Okay. Things that people would check you out for. Like, what are you doing? Don't climb that fence because you might fall. Nobody, no, nobody was there to check me. I just did and I found out I did it. I fell down a couple of times. I injured myself. So maybe that. I, can't, I don't really know what the psychology behind it is. But that might be some things that okay. made me just because I, really, I, really, I really didn't really know what to check me mm-hmm. I had this conversation with a friend of mine in the US too like when I got there and I saw I just started observing things like kids in the toddlers in the US mm-hmm. from when they're like three months as, as much as they can crawl or mm-hmm. walk you see them doing crazy things like um, climbing a wall climbing their um, cradle to the top and coming down using just being able to use their mind just what's around them to do stuff that even people like uh Nigerian babies can't do. Can't do, yeah. You get, you see your baby trying to it's climb like, before, get down. and it falls. Get down, get down there. Don't fall down. You break your leg. Like, okay, I think I'll, they don't want to, but they will let you experience that as a Western baby. Right. So those things that you don't see, like, oh, that is a, that's a table. Believe I fall. Like, you you do you only learn through experience. Okay. That is why you see these people doing extreme sports like climbing um, Mount Everest or doing ski diving or you never see people like us doing because they put fairness us from the from the from the yeah, onset like how you fall down don't, don't ride that bike you mm-hmm. break your leg only mm-hmm. ash can you can you go can you go like that I'm like so those kind of things are things that I feel that some subconscious from yeah. growing up in this yeah. environment. Right. You understand? So we need to be able to um, make our children like be more open and experience stuff by themselves. Let mm-hmm. let the let the boy touch the hot water. Let him know he won't die. Mm. You get, but I think the extra things that you let your kid do, like mm-hmm. go drive in a car or mm-hmm. walk on the road. Mm-hmm. But things inside, they was try to put some things in check that will make them not very have a very fatal accident. Right. You understand? Right. So I, so I, I, I get that now because a lot of us Africans, I mean, we don't don't go there. Don't. In fact, our minds is there. Don't go there. Why do you want to try it? You, you said you jumped into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I just went like. No, no, no. That's that's very that's that's very very funny. So I can see where everything is now coming from also because for you to you know jump into one place get to one place and then it packed your bags with little money because you know how expensive new york can be right with that little money you went <laughs> and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then you went and you know, started <clears throat> living and things like that so let's pass all of that how has work been or let me, let me see how has work been in you now trying to make ends meet Right, you called me one day. You're talking about how you were at a bar, somewhere, and then you just met this lady, I think from the IMDb or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now, there's something also that has to do with interpersonal relationship. So it's one thing for you to you know launch into the deep and things like that, but then yeah. you're definitely in a new environment, right? Okay. And you have to interact with people. You're also strong on interpersonal relationships. Skills. I like to believe so myself. Yeah, it's, it's you. Do you get what I'm saying? So. Okay. If you don't mind sharing these experiences, right? Because I said, I mean, we are coming here. The, we're talking about African millennials, you know, adapting to global environments and things like that. Stories from you, you know, is definitely encouraging you know, to so many, to millions of people right now. So, yeah, true. Can you just share a couple of experiences of you just walking up to people, what the responses was like, people that maybe turned you down, people that gave ear, and let's just talk about them. Yeah. Fine. So, um, the IMDb woman. That was mm-hmm. very long time ago. She never called me back though, but I still okay. feel good talking to her. Mm-hmm. And um, so, was, I think it was my first week in New York mm-hmm. and I was in the train. Mm-hmm. So she sat just beside me and she was typing very funny. You know when you hold your phone, that either typing with your thumb, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe one hand or two hands mm-hmm. on the phone, but she was, she held her phone this way and was typing with, the, okay, she was, she, held, she was typing this way. Oh, okay. Like, and I said, that's cool. That's weird, but it's cool. I think where is the new cool? She like, she's not smiled. <laughs> In the train, then she, so I started chatting and chatting. So like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, uh, I just got to New York like mm-hmm. my first two weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm just exploring stuff. Mm-hmm. I can, I did some creative work in Nigeria. Did mm-hmm. some acting for some friends. So like, oh, mm-hmm. you act? I'm like, yeah. Why not? It's New York. She so was like, uh, give me your phone number. I'll shoot you a text or something like that. So I gave her my number and she called me, sent me some of her works that she she wants to do something on African people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm down. It's New York. Let's get paid. But long story short, I didn't get the call back from her. I'm not even okay. bothered. <clears throat> so, um, also, I met a couple of... Um, I knew a friend from Nigeria. I met her in New York. I met okay. a friend of ours, too. Mm-hmm. The next thing I saw was, um, you know, there's this there's this um, TV show, mm-hmm. YouTube show that we want you to be on. I think you should go to the show. Like, you'll mm-hmm. fit it. I'm like, mm, okay. Why not? Then I went. Mm-hmm. And I got picked, selected for the show. 
Mm. But long story short, we did what we had to do, and it's no longer from mm. here. Mm. So that is more like me meeting people and things mm. like that. I saw a guy I met from Instagram, and was in New York, mm. Tyro Roxin. Yes, right, my guy, Tyre. Tyre Roxin. Yes. Yeah. So we are very close right now, and I, mm. I just sent him a message on Instagram like UOT, uh, blah blah blah. Did some, I don't know if he's called emailing or whatever you call it, but mm-hmm. we chatted and we exchanged um, mm. contacts and we made a meet. Mm-hmm. And it was a super awesome guy. Someone yeah. like me, maybe like, you know, 2.0. It's just it's really cool. Mm-hmm. And he had so many things to see about New York and how to blend in and things like that. Mm-hmm. We still chat you today regularly when I see him. I have to see him when I get back to New York. Mm-hmm. So that is, I just try to um, take advantage of a situation where I'm in. Like if I see people, maybe talk about their research or their, not really flat, but just say something funny like, oh, that's weird but that's cool I'll do that's that to you, myself that's you giving a compliment it's something exactly. we're going to talk about on the show okay. you know, so um, there's a part where or there's this saying that says a man's gift right makes room for him okay. so I say the gift in three ways right so the gift first gift is about what you buy for the person okay. right and then it gives way you know to the king. So, so you brought this thing and everything oh I thank you and everything so who are you what do you want right the second gift is maybe your talent Right, so you can do this. You have the skill and everything. It will mm-hmm. bring you before kings, also. And then I think the third gift is when you give compliments, okay. actually, to people, I right? Because it's it's a, yeah. I just you know because I've had these different experiences. There was a man I was at Atex Lagos, and I met him on the staircase. You know, I just had a nice suit and everything. We got talking, and you know, did a couple of he sent a couple of briefs in that you know, okay. as added to to the company's portfolio and things like that. Right, just with gifts. Through him, I met two other people that brought in some gigs also. Mm-hmm. last year just because I said he was wearing a nice suit so I think that can also be you know a gift also. and I say that you're really really working a lot with that last part where you give compliments to people and I think it's something that a lot of us have to learn how to do instead of just sitting down at the reception and then uh, you just buried your head on your phone someone walks and see them just say something nice about them you know, good afternoon things like that I think you might just be Entertaining a stranger, exactly. You true. know, like uh, entertaining an angel, like um, the the man Abraham did. All right, you know what? Let's have a short break, and then we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about how how you can transition from the mindset or who you are as an African millennial, okay. right, and then being a Western citizen. Do you get? Of course, there are some who are you know been born there and everything, but then you're now moving from this part and then going to that part and everything. The challenges and things like that. How are you able to adapt? to that environment and you know get things going so let's have a short break and we'll be back in a bit alright cool exploring the African narrative leading the conversation and enlightening our listener towards a profitable Africa They are 1.8 billion globally. They will make 75% of workforce by 2025. They will outspace earnings of baby boomers in less than 10 years. Smartphones and tablets are the argument settlers and fact checkers for every conversation. Get more insights on African millennials on Africa Business Radio towards a profitable Africa. That's cool on the beat. <laughs> okay, so you know, I'm with you. That night, you um, you came to meet me at the Rhythm on Plug, right? And then um, I think we were supposed to maybe go get Sharma or something at 4 a.m. or not Deku. I'm sorry, in this Uber. Okay, so this is a story, guys. We're in this Uber and. I think at one of the junctions, one of the junctions at on Adeola Deku, there was a red light at 4 a.m. Now, <laughs> this Uber driver did not stop for the red light. He just continued driving. And then Jerome was like, what did you just do? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I, I the driver, and the driver said, why are you shouting? I'm like, ah. <laughs> I was in the front, I'm like, ah. So now this is it. The driver's uh, what's it called? Is it psychology in our environment? I don't, what, what do you call that thing? Um, the driver's the thought process was like it's not wrong. Process. Nothing wrong. What did I did. There's nothing wrong. I can't wait at the traffic light at 4 a.m. You know, on a day could there's no car coming because that is how it is here. But then Jiren's like, ah. So I was at the back and I was already laughing because I, I was seeing two different cultures, you know, clashing, and then one, each of them were believing that they were both right. So, um, you. 
Ibadan, Lagos. You get what I'm saying? And then you're not in a different environment. What's it like? Do you get? Because I see a lot of people. I see idols. I was on the zebra crossing one day, right? And then this girl was honing. It was zebra crossing on I just said Odego, and then she was honing. <laughs> and I looked at her, and then she wind down. She wanted to wind down and say something. And I said, "And you go to Canada next week, Abby." <laughs> then both of us started laughing, right? So there is this environmental or is it this cultural thing, right? Of an African millennial in Africa, and then the shock that happens when you get into the Western world. And of course, the Western world, there are different other cultures in it. Yeah. Can you, I don't want to ask what it was like for you. Won't mind that. But then what would you have to say about adapting, dig get and changing? And that reflects also in work culture, in yeah, so many actually, things. So that if I people don't. just think they just want to go to other places, you know, are you sure I'm going to become like a baggage or something or come with you or whatever? So let me hear. Um, so about the um, culture, for me, when I got there, it was a culture shock. Right. Initially, and... I was in Gastina for a year plus. Mm. So it was kind of calm. It was calmer. You get, there were more white people than there were African, than Africans. I don't like black. I hate okay. that term Sorry. black. Pink. So I'm like, <laughs> I like to say Indigo. I'm African more than black. Okay. You get, so <laughs> there were more African, African Americans. Mm. And um, it wasn't, it was normal. It was just pretty chill. You see nobody on the road. You drive for like a year. I didn't get any tickets or any speeding tickets. No, everything was just very fine. Mm. And then I got to New York where you see different cultures is a melting pot mm. you get that is where the, um, that's where I knew what they call type diversity mm. you get and at that moment you have to be able to um, be, be um, you have to be well versed on what they call diversity IQ which nobody even knew before there's EQ IQ now there's what they call DQ which is a new thing that's what's that trending diversity IQ that diversity quotient quotient whatever so right. um, I think that's trending in the, in the US mm. and we'll get back to that later I believe mm. but about the culture shock here so when I got to the um, US I didn't see anything on the floor like trash or whatever so there's no way I could trash on the floor mm-hmm. you get it the way you leave your house that's how people treat it for you yeah. you feel if your house is clean you take off your shoes at the door I won't mm-hmm. come and wear my shoes into your house mm-hmm. you feel so when you when you have that um, changing mindset or view of the world like traffic light won't stop in doesn't matter how long it takes mm-hmm. you're fine if you're rushing if, it, if the Google says 15 minutes you get a 15 minutes it has, it has already calculated the um, time of maybe some stops into it so there's really no rush mm-hmm. you understand so seeing that I'm inside this car with this Uber driver and it's driving, I'm like why are you why are you breaking the light well, I'm not rushing anyway like I don't want to maybe die. what you if the car was coming that. there that didn't have a light and you just ran it. you can't talk about like why did you have to run mm. like I say that thing every single day when I'm in Nigeria I go out every single day and I'm like these people are not patient for anything at all you understand but then you didn't know that before you left. I think that finally, because I was part of them, I'm like, let's just also my boss and do everything. I'm like, damn, this is really not the best mm-hmm. you get. And today I was thinking of maybe I should just be a vigilante and everyone that's doing stupid things on the road. I just slap them or give them some kind of pa pa. Do the right baby. thing. Mm-hmm. Behave yourself. Like mm-hmm. this is this is wrong. Mm-hmm. If I could, if I have the superpower, I'd be like that kind of person that like, go around mm-hmm. and do phew, pa pa pa. Mm-hmm. What are you doing there? You can't be on the stride walk, you have to be on the road. Pa, pa, pa. I wish I could do that if yeah, I add can. if I if I add the superpower. That's <laughs> what I was thinking today, because literally yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. I was at the place in Lake here. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was waiting for my old ride. What's that what's that thing called? Mm-hmm. The cars that mm-hmm. take us around. So the guy said he was at the other side of the road. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what, don't have to turn. I'm going straight. I'll cross to you. Mm-hmm. So I was pulling my bag and I was on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Then as I got to the sidewalk, a bike was just there. Mm-hmm. So I, I moved. Mm-hmm. Right? And the guy was like, why did I even move? Like then yeah, I saw I saw three other bikes coming. Mm-hmm. The guy's like, bros, please. I'm like, I just reasoned I was like, you didn't the guy looked at me and said, bros, please. I'm like, the guy just came down. The passenger was like, please, I'm like, no way. I think are you are you are you alright? Like what are you doing here? <laughs> like, the four of them there had to come down because I didn't leave. You get I'm like this, I'm supposed to be here. You should not be on this side of the road. Get back on the road. <laughs> so it's I think maybe it was my physique or my stature or whatever, but I did that because mm-hmm. it was annoying. Like normally you'll be like, oh, they're coming. You want to move as a mm-hmm. Nigerian, like let me move on there because now nah, Okada, no one. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to give the guy like a dirty slap. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you leave this place before I push so now, back into now, the water. Now, now, now this thing, right, is I see the difference, right? And for you and for many other people, right, we always have this this uh, mix of cultures in us. Right now, to now put a balance to it in our everyday lives, right, and the things we do every day to ourselves, right. I want to come from the point of psychology, mm-hmm. right. 
what are the things you think we can do to bring change? I was talking with, I think it was someone I was talking with, I said, you know what? Whoever is in power, right, represents the mindset of the majority, and that's just the fact. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Because that's what democracy is. Do you get what I'm saying? So that if each person decides to just arrange themselves well, we would know how to bring people who know how to arrange things. They get into power and get things going. So, from the psychological part, right, and things like that, or everything you are, what do you think individuals now, right, especially African millennials who are willing to transition, you know, to the different parts of the world, right, what are the things you think that they should start taking note of in themselves, in their everyday life, so that they don't just get an end a shock and then they're getting deprived of op- opportunities or even basic things as a Skype call, right? Mm-hmm. What are these basic things, according to what you've learned, right, that you think an African millennial who's in transition, you know, should take note of? All right. So, um, before I went to the US, right, I was pretty high on confidence and I was still chilling. I was doing my stuff. Yeah. But I figured I had, I had a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. You get when it came to um, etiquettes, like how to behave in public and things like that, you feel? Like some things I do, Regularly, like I'm just sitting in um, maybe in someone's house, and I just go and I pick a, I pick a drink or so, take something off. Yeah, my friend, but I like, let's take your drink. Mm-hmm. You do that in Nigeria, like, ah, now my child, make I, let, let me take your food. You don't do that in the US. It doesn't matter. It's not yours. You have to ask first. <laughs> we, we've become so there's no personal space in Nigeria yeah. anymore. Like, yeah. you just learn, learn to apologize. You get like, can I have that? Mm-hmm. Ask questions. You get that kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. you don't just take what is not yours. No, if you do, don't say sorry. Can I have that? Can I have that? Can I? You have to put, please. Because I don't apologize. Can I, exactly. You have to put like if one. That's how that talk. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> can I, no. Can I have that, please? Mm-hmm. Can I have some of that or whatever? You, whatever you want to say, just find a way to always ask questions. Don't assume. And then okay. um, your um, the way you the way you behave in the way you behave in public, right? Mm. The thing the thing I learned from one of my mentors in the US, Doug Melville. Mm. Um, the guy is, is very um, very great guy, amazing guy. And the guy told us a couple of things. Was I was working? I was working at then. TBWA is the mm-hmm. chief diversity officer there, and he said something about about it's not what you project that people look at. Mm. You think you are showing um, this is my flag and when the new eyes show, they don't look at that. They look at something else. Mm-hmm. So you have to know how to manage yourself, how to manage your, um, repu- how to manage your reputation outside. Right. That there are different things that you need to do. Like say like seven things. Like um, like for instance, business meetings. Right, you want to make a business meeting with somebody. You need to know that. I can imagine that, okay, I said, Tommy, let's have dinner for something. I don't know you before. I'm not sitting in your front. And I, mm-hmm. yeah, and they bring the, the menu. Mm-hmm. My best food is spaghetti mm-hmm. or maybe mamal or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's a business meeting. Mm-hmm. At that moment, I have to let go of my love for spaghetti and get steak because it's not decent. Right. Fuck a knife. You chew. Mm-hmm. You can eat spaghetti. I don't I want, and I want these things. I, I want these the business. things can actually be applied to even being here. Yes, it can happen to be in your because because those are things those are things you need to know, mm-hmm. right? Like um it says your your reputation precedes you. If people mm. don't know you as a as a courteous person, mm. you feel it says something like um eighty percent of decisions that are made on your behalf are made when you're not in the room. You understand? Mm. Like if if I if I know you before mm-hmm. and someone says there's a big decision you made on Tommy, should, should mm. I give this guy the job or the contract? You're not mm. there, but you're coming like next thing I'm like, that guy is a Great guy is a dead guy, mm. that kind of thing. Mm. When you enter, my, my everybody's mind is set up like that guy's a gay yeah. guy. But if, but if I'm not doing like that guy's a dead guy, yeah. guy whatever. Mm-hmm. When you enter, you, be, like, you you think that is I alone share when they share you alone share. Right? <laughs> Sorry, what does that mean in English? Okay, in, in English, you mean that your witches and your wizards are doing like it's some, not, some, it's that's not <laughs> that someone, someone's after you, but nobody's doing you because you are not being a very good person. You need to know how to manage your mm-hmm. and reputation and also mind relationships with people. Right, you right. understand. So that those are things that can affect you. Across board, right? You understand, right? So, um, I mean, there was this lady I met, and I was very pretty, pretty on confidence. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I met this lady one time, and she and she's like, um, come to my office, I wanted the job. Mm-hmm. Then I wasn't ready for the interview, mm-hmm. I was like, ah, oh, it's the woman, I got this. So, I just went in. It was actually, actually, it was a Skype call, it was mm-hmm. a phone call. Mm-hmm. Then that day, my phone spot and everything, and everything just went crazy. I could have just said, hey. Um, I'm sorry, I can't do this call right now. Mm-hmm. Let me do it some other time because something's wrong with my phone. Yeah. Like, fine, I'm like, oh my, this is one chance. I was like, God is. I'll rough it. I'll rough it. Wrong decision, wrong decision I ever made because everything just went. So, she, what happened? She called mm-hmm. and um, 
she asked the question. I wasn't even ready. I had to go out to go and take the phone call. This time, just say, oh, I can't do this right now because mm-hmm. my phone is not good. Everything yeah. is going wrong with me today. Can we do some other time? Just can I reschedule this? Mm-hmm. I learned that lesson. Can I reschedule? If I'm not comfortable, we don't do it. Don't do it. She's also as a very as disorganized a person. On serious person. Wow, man. You know, this this thing has really, really been. I mean, why is it always towards the end of the time that it gets hotter? I don't get it. Always learn to just, just always learn to be scared. This is what I was always just learn to be scared. You know what? You know, don't, you know what, guys, it's um dead you know, on Instagram and Twitter. Ask him more questions about this. Please, right? yes. If you can do more um like a thread on, on this conversation. Right. All right, guys, don't forget to go on getuping.com to take the African Millennial Report survey and let's have a report that everybody can use also. Um we have to go now. It's a 30 minute show. We're trying to make it one hour, hopefully, but then I don't know if my team will say we should make it one hour or not. But okay, that's fine, Dero. Yes. Sir. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't talk in camera and we can't talk on air anymore. Okay. Right. So let's do Twitter or Instagram or something. All right, fair enough. Just chat. So you can follow uh, me at um Daddy And it has Mr. Dot yeah. yeah, that's Mr. is my um creative <laughs> side of it. Side All right, guys. <laughs> thank you for being on the African Millennial Radio Show Africa Business Radio. It's Tommy Wall and I have to go right now. Bye for now. You're listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa.